In video games, hardware is important. When you build a gaming PC, specs matter. And whether you're building new or upgrading, random access memory comes up. So is all RAM the same? Well, no. RAM runs at different speeds, and given that, the potential for an impact in your benchmarks is there. So what exactly does that mean? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we ask the question, what is more likely to impact gaming? RAM speed or RAM size? So, to talk about RAM, we first have to lay out what RAM exactly is. As the name implies, random access memory is memory, but not the same as a hard drive type memory. It's temporary and intended to be significantly faster than a hard drive, simply for calculation, loading purposes, etc. When you're playing a game, various parts of what's on screen is loaded into the RAM so that it can be accessed. Depending on the game, that could mean anything from textures to 3D models to sound files, and there's really nothing set as to exactly what content is being loaded through the RAM. Sometimes games directly stream things off of some piece of media, that be it the hard drive or a Blu-ray or whatever. It's maybe a little bit more random than you could easily define you know, what people might want to access on the memory. Keep in mind, that is not actually what random and access refer to, I was just making a joke. It actually refers to the way in which data is written, which can be in any order, whereas on other types of media, it's not like that. A common metaphor you might find is that if your computer was a worker, your RAM would be a workbench or a countertop for them to have their current project sitting on and when they're done, it would have to be moved off of the workbench, replaced with whatever new work needs to be done. Metaphorical workers of the world unite. <laughs> now the reason why RAM is used is because it's much, much faster than even solid state memory. It's also why you see it in a few gigs at a time. It's more expensive to produce because it's actually a little bit more mechanical than other memory. And when it loses power, all of the data that was there is just dumped anyhow. So if you're thinking, well, why don't they just make hard drives with that? There's your reason. Unless you want to go back to the days of battery backup, it's not really a viable solution. And just to be clear, I really don't. You know how many Donkey Kong Country saves I've lost thanks to that? Yeah, no, don't want to go back to that. Especially for, you know, like, everything you would put on a hard drive, which is way more than just Donkey Kong Country saves. Now, common wisdom has mostly said to people, hey, RAM speed isn't that important. What is important is that you get as much RAM as possible onto your system. And I would even say that for a large amount of time, that's basically true. Over the last 30 years, we've seen the amount of RAM that you can possibly have for a small amount of money rapidly expand. And during the course of that, what lots of RAM means has shifted very quickly. I mean, in the 80s, we were measuring RAM by kilobytes, in the 90s, by megabytes. By the late 90s, it was hundreds of megabytes, and it was around the year 2011 when one gigabyte of RAM became standard. Nowadays, it seems weird to have anything less than eight gigabytes of RAM in a computer. This is in no small part due to the fact of the average cost of RAM simply just going down. As research and development happens, as production techniques become more efficient, as more jobs are automated away, the cost of producing it goes down and therefore the cost of buying it should in theory go down. And it has, though maybe not quite proportionally to the cost of making it. Take that information as you will. But keeping in mind that consumer price and actually just which products to release is a carefully curated ballet in which companies with power and control do what they can to not disrupt their own ability to make money, as well as progress the technological prospects, there has actually been a shift towards improving RAM speed to a point where it actually might make some degree of difference. Now, here's the issue. You are very likely to find conflicting opinions on this from people who have done tests that bring us to very different conclusions. And I think it's important to go into a couple of reasons to why that might be. First off, games are not written the same. 
even games that use the same engine will usually use different components and write things in different ways. For instance, an open world game will most likely need a way to handle constant loading of different information as you're moving around a map, where a game that has separate, very specific levels might be able to load the entire level and be completely fine with that. Different types of games require different types of data configurations, and some are going to lean harder on the GPU, which, if you have an external GPU, has its own set of RAM itself, and some are going to end up leaning harder on the CPU than others. Honestly, it's not possible to go into the number of differences that one team might have in their approach to writing a game even with the same engine, but keeping in account that a lot of teams use a lot of different engines, while Unreal is certainly popular, not everyone is using it, results are not going to be uniform with this type of a thing. Especially since some people have the perception that RAM speed isn't really a bottleneck, and that could easily influence development. One could even make the case that in order for RAM speed to matter in some ways, RAM would have to be a huge priority of the developers. So we have to keep that in mind when we consider results of various benchmarking tests like the ones posted by Blueman541 on our competitive Overwatch, which showed a pretty big increase in performance in Overwatch when comparing 1600 MHz versus 2400 MHz DDR3 memory. Now I bring up this particular set of results as Blue Man 541 was meticulous in documenting exactly what they did. There's a very clear tendency for Overwatch to get really near the full capacity of the CPU, which means the CPU has a lot of things to handle, and the RAM could affect exactly how fast that's handled, and apparently does. Now, having faster RAM apparently brought the GPU's load up, despite not really affecting the CPU's load. Now, I'm simplifying a little bit, but since this resulted in higher frame rates as opposed to a problem, we can assume that the GPU is limited in this particular instance by how fast the RAM is going. Now, does that mean every single hardware configuration is going to function exactly like this? No, but there is some indication that RAM speed has an effect on Overwatch, for instance. Other testers, such as Ash Rash Rasher, give similar results. Another series of tests by Coco Lordus 15 in R Build a PC yielded results on a number of games that actually did indicate very much that RAM speed does improve frames per second. Again, depending on which game it was, was also depending on what kinds of percentages of gains actually came out of overclocking the RAM, but the fact that it did make a difference at all is an indicator that the way people have looked at RAM for the last several decades, which is simply as a number, an amount, isn't entirely applicable anymore. Now, that's not to say if you have four gigabytes of RAM at a faster speed than eight, it's necessarily definitely going to improve your gaming experience. It may not be that RAM speed is your bottleneck here. It may be that RAM amount is. However, the point is that the new variable has been introduced. Now, a site called WePC.com also performed a series of tests using a graphics demo that indicated the RAM speed did not actually have any effect on that demo. I think if we're discussing all of these user tests, it makes sense to add this into the discussion, as it demonstrates that different game or simply just program architecture is ultimately going to be a determining factor. The demo in question was Time Spy by 3D Mark, which is essentially a DirectX 12 benchmark test. Now, unfortunately, what this leaves us with, if we're asking the question what's more likely to affect gaming, is a rapidly changing environment that depends heavily on individual developers and their methodology. So the current answer is basically, I think amount of RAM, if we're looking at gaming as a whole, but that's only because amount of RAM has traditionally been the thing that actually matters. However, in recent years, that has been changing a lot. So if we're talking about the future of gaming, what will be more likely to affect I think the answer is probably RAM speed. 
At the moment, the amount of RAM being put in the average PC is kind of plateauing. We had a similar thing happen with CPU speed a while back, and the focus was shifted more towards threading and cores and not necessarily the actual clock speed of the CPU. You can improve a CPU while still technically maintaining the same clock speed. The idea was to resolve other bottlenecks, or at least try. I think we're seeing that happen with RAM, and although it may be that they continue to add more RAM, it may be that the thing that matters more, as certain types of games get more popular, certain games that don't require a massive open world, or certain games that do, it may start to depend a lot more heavily on RAM speed. Or it could end up being both, I have to acknowledge that as a possibility, however, given that it's recently started to matter, I would guess that people are going to be searching for ways for it to matter more. That tends to be how technology progresses, and it will probably ultimately circle back into creating an overall better product, which is good. It will be interesting to watch, and if the plateauing trend of average RAM put into PCs continues or changes. This is actually kind of a contentious topic depending on what school of thought you're in, so please share with us your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.